They often say when it comes to work holding, if you're not properly investing in the right work holding and premium work holding for your machining setup, the rest of your machining setup isn't gonna be able to perform to the utmost of its abilities. What's up guys, Ian Sandusky from Lakewood Machining Tool back here again for Practical Machinist. And today on Machine Shop Talk, we're gonna be diving into that statement and seeing whether there's truth to it or maybe can you get away with cheaper work holding options. But before we do, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications below to make sure you never miss a video. Let's get into it. Okay guys, so as promised today, we are gonna be discussing my personal experience with the Jurgens ball lock system and subplate. Before we get too into this, we did do a video previously where we just got it set up and we were just starting to run it. It was about five months ago. So if you haven't seen that video and you want a little more context, feel free to check it out. To quickly recap just the history of us using it and the system itself, we got from Jurgens Work Holding, thank you very much, this subplate system. So this is a ground steel subplate. It comes with a uh, dual soft jaw vise. So opening and closing from both sides with aluminum soft jaws. Machinable, they come pre-anodized, they look super nice. We got a heavy duty milling vise. This is a smaller vise. Um, it came with a subplate. So theoretically, if you wanted to, you could put this on other machines, but we subplated it on here so we can move it around quickly. Then we also got a self-centering vise and all the bells and whistles that put it onto our fourth axis, as well as the subplate to make life easy for that. But we'll get into that in a second. So the biggest selling point that caught my eye of the Jurgens ball lock system is the ball lock system itself. You know, there are a lot of subplates out there. Um, there are a lot of options for this kind of work holding out there. This is something I hadn't personally seen before. And what the ball lock system is, is you use these ball lock shanks to be able to go in at predetermined locations on that table. And when you tighten them down and you just use a tiny little Allen key to tighten it down, it forces the balls out into the receivers. And this not only holds the vise down or the work holding down or the subplate down, but it locates it to where it needs to be. Now, this is not a zero point system. Um, for those that don't know, a zero point system is zero point repeatability. So every time you put it in there, it's gonna be at zero. These systems are super complicated and super expensive. This has about half thou repeatability. So if you put something on there, take the ball lock shanks out, move it around, put it back in, it's gonna to be to within half a thou over that distance of repeatability. It's gonna be in the same spot. This is very, very important because you're getting you know, pretty much a zero point for most applications, that's as close to zero as you're gonna get without paying for a zero point system. And in my experience in using this, it's 100% true. Uh, when it comes to putting vices on the table, not only does it hold it down very effectively, you know, we've done some very heavy cuts, we've done some very aggressive milling, we've had no lift, which was a concern, you know, these little shanks, you literally tighten a little tiny set screw and it holds it in, you kind of have some doubts, but in our experience, we have had nothing lift. The only time we had something lift was when we put the wrong shank in the wrong hole. <laughs> you're supposed to use three quarter, inch and three quarter, inch and a half. If you're not paying attention, that's on you. But we've had no problems with that. As well, you know, when it comes to putting in vices, in my shop, because we are a job shop, we're moving vices around a lot. Um, we have T-slot tables on the rest of our, uh, rest of our mills. Our practice is no matter when you put a vise in, no matter what you're doing, you always clock it in. I think most shops do that. It's just good practice. You know, it keeps you from getting in trouble. So even when we've been putting these vices on here, we've been clocking them in, even though it's a half hour repeatability. And we found that to be true. We don't really need to do it. In fact, we don't need to do it, but I don't like anybody getting lazy. So we still do it. But if you use this in your own shop, you also probably don't have to. To move on with my experience with it, um, to first talk about the dual soft jaw vise. That is a aluminum jaw vise that comes pre-anodized. It is a fantastic unit. Um, you can see, I'll show you a zoom in on here in a second. 
you'll see that it's actually been mired up. That's not a downfall of this vise. When it comes to soft jaw vices, that's actually what you want. We were running a 304 angle job in here last, which is why they look like that. And when you're running saw cut parts, these parts were saw cut out of 304 angle, the cut's never gonna be perfect. The sides are never gonna be perfectly flat. You're not gonna have a nice smooth finish to be able to grip on if you're using traditional hard jaws. And because of this, if there's any little points you're using you know, ground hard jaws, all the clamping force is gonna be focused on that little point. What does that mean? It means those parts can kick. It's not getting a good grip. With this soft jaw system, it actually deforms just a little bit. So when you're using, you know, castings, irregularly shaped parts, saw cut parts, even if you're using stock that may taper just a little bit, you know, stock when you bring it in is not always perfect. You want the jaws to deform just a little bit in order to hold that part over its whole length. That's been fantastic. We've been running parts on both sides of it. Um, really can't say enough about it. And the good thing is, even though we marred those jaws down, they're soft jaws. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna take an end mill, run it between the jaws in a closed position or with a parallel between them, and now we're gonna have fresh faces on them and step jaws, so you can use them without a parallel. Anyways, great system, I like that vise a lot. For the small milling vise, this is a heavy duty milling vise. Um, I really like it. I found that it does what it says on the tin. You know, it's a premium vise. You can get a ton of force in that thing without having to worry about bending the ball screw or the lead screw on it. Um, we've done some really, really heavy milling in there. We just did a tool test that was really pushing tools. Zero problem, even though we were only holding on to about an eighth of an inch. So, you know, if you need a good small milling vise, fantastic, does a great job. Today, we're gonna actually be looking at the fourth axis. Now, we just put this in. Um, this has been very interesting. We've been working around it because we wanted to see if this does what it claims. So let's take a look at this. So when it comes to the Jurgens ball lock system and subplate, this thing has a very important feature that really sets it apart from any other subplate I've seen. So we have our fourth axis here. It's a Haas HA5CB, I believe. This thing is big, this is heavy. We have to use a forklift to get it in and out of the machine. You can see this eye bolt up top here. That's for a lifting strap in order to get it in and out. Um, you know, if you had some kind of little powered mini forklift or a, a crank cart, you could probably do it. But for us, we use a forklift. This was actually bought, well not this, this was actually bought for a larger mill. And even with a larger table, that machine has a 60 inch table. We can't leave this in all the time. We're a job shop, we're high mix, we're low volume, we're constantly moving stuff around. So that means every time we wanted to use this fourth axis, we would have to go get it out of storage because we don't just keep it where it can get damaged, get it out of storage, put a lifting bolt in it, put a lifting strap on it, lift it into the machine, put it in, indicate it in, bolt it down. And then when we were done, because we lost that table space, you know, this thing's almost about a foot out to the chuck from the back. We'd have to go unclamp it, you know, clean it off, put an eyeball back in, lift it up, get it out. And you know, we're a tight shop. We don't have a ton of room. So that entire time we're using a forklift in very cramped quarters. It's just extremely disruptive. What the Jurgens ball lock plate does, this is interesting. I'll show you from another angle here in a second. But this fourth axis is actually not directly on my physical table, the T-slot table underneath. This is actually hanging off on a extension to the table to the right side of my table. Now, when it comes to modern machines, typically, and you know, it's true at least for all the machines that I work with, they have a dead space. So right now, if I jog this table all the way to the right, the edge of the table is not actually going to run into the wall. Jurgens has gone and actually calculated and engineered this. So this is actually hanging off. This whole fourth axis is hanging off in that dead space. So I'm not losing any of my actual working area here, but this can stay on. So that means I need to move it around less. It means I can still get my full table here. You know, even if I bring this down over here, I don't have to worry about it, especially if I take the vise off and this is quick, quick disconnect. So that way, you know, all that moving around, that uh, lifting, that putting in, that taking out, massively simplified. It can stay on here all the time. The other thing is they gave us this subplate for it. Now the subplate uses that same ball lock shank system, 
So it can go in if I do ever need to take it out. Maybe I have something that's the full length of the table and I need to hang it out the door. I can just undo these ball locks, take this off, put it over there. And when I put it back in, it goes right back where it's supposed to go. I tighten down the ball lock shanks, it's indicated and it's ready to go. The other thing they gave us is this self-centering vise. These are typically used in fourth axis or five axis applications. You can see it has these gripper jaws on here. This thing is awesome. We've used it a few times, not on the fourth axis. We've used it actually just on the table for some parts. Now, the reason why these are really, really useful is when it comes to four and five axis work, you're typically dealing with things that are going to be hanging out far from the vise. So long and narrow parts. You know, when you see guys with blocks that are this long, but you're only holding on to about an eighth of an inch. With other self-centering vices like this, they don't have anti-lift. So in order to keep that part when you're out here tightened down to make sure it doesn't move, you gotta crank these things. You gotta make sure there's a ton of clamping force there. And with other self-centering vices I have used, they lift. So the entire thing goes like this when you tighten it down. That means that part's not flat anymore. That means that part can get kicked. There's a lot, yeah, it's, it's dangerous more than anything. With the Jurgens, these actually have anti-lift built in standard. You know, you can get them as an option with other ones that I've seen, but it's standard. So that is interesting to me. This is also quick disconnect. There's a little uh, screw here. So you use a little wrench and it pops off four posts here. So you can have this right here for off one. So we can do this face on it, pick it up, boom, one twist. Again, it's all locating. So you don't need to indicate it in and it's ready to go. We're really excited to keep using this. Um, very impressed with it so far. So as mentioned guys, we have had the opportunity to run this in my shop for the last five months. And I do have some thoughts and feedback on this system. Firstly, if you are a production shop or you are a shop that runs the same kinds of jobs over and over. And by that, I don't mean leaving it set up all the time. I mean, you have 10 customers and they have 10 jobs each and these are repetitive. There's a lot of shops out there like that, or you are a production shop. So you guys are making your own products in house, that kind of thing. This kind of system is really going to blow your production out of the water. Um, when it comes to setting up, that's where this shines because you can move things around quickly and easily. Um, you can have things ready to go. So, you know, as the machine's running, if I have other vices and stuff on sub plates, I can actually stage a whole, the whole other job ready to go and my changeover instead of pulling out vices, um, setting everything up, especially if I'm using commonly staged tools, I could literally just pull out four ball lock shanks, throw in four new ball lock shanks with new uh, sub plates, change my program and I'm ready to go. Um, it really is that fast. So if you are high production, high volume, or even you know medium volume, low mix, this is gonna be extremely valuable for you. In high mix environments, it's still going to be very valuable, but my experience with it is, much like putting an ERP system on the floor or you know, switching over to a new brand of tooling or switching over to a new CAD CAM program, the benefit you're gonna get out of this system is completely correlated to the amount that you're going to buy into the system, the amount you're gonna invest, the amount you're going to get everybody using it on your floor. If you have one machine set up with this, you're gonna get benefits, no doubt. Um, you know, we've seen it with one machine, but where I think it's really gonna shine is if you have multiple machines or even a cell of machines set up with this, that's when you're really gonna get the benefits because then you can move a job from one to another. Um, it really standardizes things across the shop. You know what setups are in what machines. You don't need to think, okay, well, that, vice, that machine has these vices, this has that, well, I can switch it around. No, 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 no. You know where those locations are. You can move things easily. So you really need to, if you're gonna put a system like this in, you gotta go for it. And I do think that's a good thing. But you know, it's like when people get an ERP system and they say, well, I'm just not getting benefit out of it. It's because you're using it two hours a week. Or when people switch cam systems and they say, well, I don't like it. Well, you've been using it for two weeks and you know, still using your old system. You really need to switch. And it's just something you should be aware of. The other thing that I think this really shines at is we all talk about the skills gap. Um, you know, there are very few experienced machinists out there right now looking for work. If you're hiring, 
you're typically gonna be hiring people at a lower level, maybe fresh out of college, maybe no trade school whatsoever, and training them up. This kind of system, like the Jurgens Ball Lock, is really going to excel at that because it takes a lot of the skill out of setups. For instance, let's say I have two skilled guys here and I have three guys I'm training. If my skilled guys have to go around and set up machines the entire day, that's great, you know, my operators are getting work, but they're not getting productive work done themselves. When it comes to a system like this, if I have everything standardized, so let's say I take the back right corner of the subplate and I say that is always for all my programs, that is my X, Y, zero, Z, zero is top of the plate. Because these devices and these subplates are all standardized, I could go and build all my programs and build setup sheets and say, so for job ABC, I can have a picture of it. Vice one, vice two, vice three, part goes here. Again, if you're using commonly staged tools, so tool one is always a half inch ML, tool two is always a spot drill and so on and so forth. Someone who's not as skilled now can go and set up a machine quickly and easily without as much guidance and taking as much time away from your more experienced guys. Um, you know, especially because they don't have to dial devices in. They don't have to pick up zeros if you're doing everything from a common spot. It really allows that skills gap to get closed a little bit because you're being able to do more with less. So I think that's somewhere where it really stands out. My last thought on this system is, again, the buy-in, because it's gonna determine how well you do with it, you need to realize that if you put a system like this in and you don't take a look at what you need for it, you're not gonna see the benefit. For instance, a T-slot table is on every machine out there for the most part, you know, sometimes you see um, threaded holes in a table. But that system is out there on just about every machine because it may not be efficient, it may not be pretty, it may take a lot of training to be able to use properly when it comes to properly clamping things down or indicating things in or building fixturing. But the reason they use it everywhere is because it's versatile. With a T-slot table, you can do anything. For better or for worse. You can do things that are bad too. So that's why they do it. When you put a system on, like this on with a subplate, you are losing the T-slots. This isn't a bad thing, but if you only get one vice and you put a subplate like this on the table, and two weeks later you turn around and you say, well, I can't put plates right down on the table, or I can't hold long work holding, or I can't move vices back and forth. You know, is that a complaint? Yes, but it's because you don't have the right equipment for it. You know, when talking to Jurgens, they have rail systems, they have tiny clamps, they have all this different stuff you can put with these in order to have a better solution than a T-slot table. But if you don't do your homework and you're not getting the right things in the door with it, you're not gonna be able to do the same things. But if you do your homework, you look into what you need, you can actually get better versatility. I know one of the next things we wanna to look to bring in for these, they're these little clamps that go into the um, ball lock shanks, you know, they get held down, and they essentially allow you to clamp anything from anywhere. They're kind of like, almost like a, like a strap clamp or a, a T-saw clamp that you typically use, but they have little vice jaws on the back, so you can hold big things because that's something we do a lot of here. We do a lot of plate work. We do a lot of, we just had a job that was a giant um, cold roll steel disc and trying to work hold that, you know, we didn't do it on this, we did another one. Our work holding for that, I am fortunate that it worked, but it shouldn't have, and I don't wanna do it again. So using something like this and getting the right equipment for it is gonna be able to help us to do more and do it better, more efficiently, and more safely. In any case, guys, I'd like to know in the comments below, have you guys used a system like this what are your thoughts on it after seeing this? If you had a critique of a system like this, let us know, you know, we all help each other through our own experiences. So let us know in the comments below. I would love to hear it. As always, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications below to make sure you never miss a video. Thank you very much for watching guys. You take care.